So these deep commercial lakes can cause some real problems catching fish like these. So come here today to Makin's Fishery to show you how to get the most out of these deep water commercials and catch fish like these. Right, so here today at Makin's Fishery on Lake 4. Now Lake 4 is actually quite unique because it's sort of 8 to 10 foot deep on the sort of pole line. Now there's quite a few commercials around the country which offer this and some people sort of find it a bit daunting to target the fish. You know, they think, oh, they're going to foul up the fish or it's going to be hard work. And in reality, it's not. It can be dead easy. But just getting little things right. Little things like getting your, your rig right, your bait right, your feeding right and stuff like that. So we'll just sort of kick off talking about bait first. Now, in these deep waters, I think the easiest bait to use is pellets. So I've just got some six mil fishery pellets like that. And I always say a six mil pellet is a nice pellet to start on because great thing with pellets, it's nice and dense. You know, it sinks fairly fast, but also fish love them. So it's always a good bait to start with. And obviously you can use different size of pellets and it also depends where you're going. So another good option is like eight mil pellets where you've got big carp and you're getting like little silvers and stuff which are a nuisance. And yeah, but six and eight mil pellets, you know, keep it nice and simple. You can have some great days fishing with them baits. Carp love them. It's a staple diet. Just keep it nice and simple. Now, I'm going to actually talk about my rig. Now, my rig is actually, I'll just pick it up. As you can see, it's like, we'll start off at the top end. It's like eight, nine foot deep today. And like I say, a lot, there's a lot of commercials around the country which are like this. And sort of people are sort of a bit, almost a bit scared of tackling them. But dead simple and this setup here you have no problems so we'll start off with the elastic I've just got a black zip elastic now this is actually quite important because you've got to obviously think about getting the fish in the net so if you use a really soft elastic getting actually getting the fish's head up in the deep water can be real hard work so you need elastic and the black's absolutely perfect for this it's nice and soft on the strike but it actually piles up nice so when you have a few strips of the puller kit, you're going to be able to get the heads up. And sometimes you're going to need, obviously, your number three or number four section to get these fish head up. So you need the right elastic. So a black is a nice elastic for that. Coming into the main line, you need a nice strong main line because obviously you're going to catch some big fish on this method. And they say if you fished a main line, it's not very deep. Uh, it's not very heavy, sorry. You know, you've got to force these fish's head up. So... If it's too light, you don't want your gear letting you down. So you're just going to lose fish. So gone for an 020 main line. Now this ain't going to break. Nice and strong. And it's really important because them carp especially, they're not too bothered about your main line. So just get away with a nice heavy main line. 020 for all carp fishing. Keep it nice and simple. Coming on to the float. I've actually got a 0.7 float. Now it's obviously quite windy today. And it's all about stability. If your rig's moving about and it's too light, you're not going to catch fish. And another thing to think about is, is actually getting your rig out there. So in today's case, we've got the wind in the face. So if our float was too light, we wouldn't be able to flick the rig out and get it into position. So we need a bit of weight in the rig to flick the rig out and get it into position of where we're feeding the pellets. So we've just got a 0.7 float there. Now, the beauty of this float is well, when you're looking for a deep water float is you need a float that's quite long and stable. So a little 4x10 carbon float, it's going to be no good because it's got no stability in the rig. We need to keep the bait, bait nice and still when we're going to catch in these fish. Now, actually moving on to the float, the body shape and stuff like that. You know, it's a good, good sort of length float. It's over about, it's about six inches, seven inches long, which again, it comes about stability. If you use a float, which is like four inches long in eight or 10 foot of water, it's just not right. It's not going to sit right and things like that. So you need a nice float. Two and a half mil tip as well. I think this is important for like fishing in deep water with hard pellets. Nice solid bristle. You're going to get a few indications um, when you're fishing this method. It's striking at the right bites. So having a thick bristle with quite a bit showing, you're waiting for that nice big positive bite and then the bites to strike on. If you have your float dotted down or a little thin bristle, you strike at all these indications, you're just going to foul up fish. So it's really important you have a nice thick bristle with plenty showing and hit the right bites. And also another thing, fiberglass stem. Next, next best thing to wire really, nice and stable. So that's the actual perfect float to use for this sort of method. Coming down, as you can see, it's, it's deep. Onto the shotting pattern. Now I think, again, this is really important. If we used, don't get me wrong, you can use strung out rigs, but they don't offer you enough stability. And like in today's case, it's windy. It's gonna, it's gonna take forever to get your bait over your pile of feed and it's just no good. So we've gone with a nice bulk and two droppers. 
So I've actually got a bulk of number eights there, and that's 18 inches away from the hook. And as you can see, I've just sort of put my one centimetre intervals in that bulk. Now, something I've started doing this is, I think it just it just curves a bit nicer. So when that, obviously, when your bait's tight to your hook bait, I think it just, because there's little gaps, it just curls a bit nicer. So I think that's just something I've been doing. I think it's working nice. So my bulk's 18 inches from my hook. And then going down another six inches from the bulk, I've got my dropper, that's a number 10. And then another six inches, we've got another number 10. And that's on top of the hook, loop, hook link loop. And the actual hook link, again, I've not gone light because, like I say, you need to get these fish's heads up. And if you fish too light, you're just going to get broke. So I've gone with actually no 18 hook link. So not messing about. And I've gone for a light, quite a light gauge hook today. It's a 16 SLWG hook. Now, if I sort of felt like I needed to go heavy, I'd just go up to the 16 SMWG hook. Just a bit stronger. And I felt like if my hook was a bit springy, I could just up it a bit and it's going to cause less problems. Now, touching on the droppers, which I want to do, uh, sort of touch on as well, is I, I like number 10 droppers, because say if I use number 8, they sort of go down a bit too fast, I think. Now, in deep water, the fish watch your bait full. So by having these little two number 10s in that sort of last bit of the water, it just falls that bit slower, and sometimes you can catch some of them wary carp on the drop. So that's all my rigs for sort of deep water fishing. Let's go and catch some fish. So right, let's get some fishing done. So, like I've explained, I've just got some 6mm pellets today, nice and simple. And I'm just going to put my 6mm in the band. Dead, dead simple. And obviously, like I've said, it's, it's a deep commercial lake this is today. It's sort of a good 8 or 9 foot deep. And this is where you've got to get your feeding correct to catch the fish. And it can be tricky, but hopefully these few tips that I'm going to show you can make it sort of simple and you can catch plenty of fish doing it. Get the hook out of my hand, which makes more sense. So, we feed in, I'm going to actually start off putting about 10 pellets in a cup. Now, obviously this might alter, but it also depends what response I get. So if I go out there, put 10 pellets in, catch a fish, great, I'll, I'll repeat that. But if I'm not getting any bites, then I've got to work out how I'm going to get the fish in my peg. So I'll get my catapult up, pick some pellets, and then five, three or four in, and try and read what the fish want. So if we're getting indications and stuff, they're obviously coming to the noise, but then I've got to work out how to get them down and basically vice versa. So it's about getting the fish into your peg and then sort of altering it to how they're responding to how you're feeding, basically. So yeah, we've got the 10 pellets in the, in the pot. Dead simple. And you're probably thinking to yourself, you're probably thinking, well, that's hardly any bait at all, but you've got to remember these fish, a lot of the time, they're already out there. Obviously, there's quite a lot of fish in these lakes. And if I went in and say put a whole cup in, say 50, 50 to 100 pellets, the chances are you're going to foul up fish because there's too many pellets there. So if you start off little and often, you can always up the, the feeding and get the fish there. But if you put it in, you can't take it out. Simple as that. So always start off light and try and work out what's going on. So I'll just ship out. I'm fishing like 14 metres today. Nice distance for this sort of fishing. And to, just to start, I'm going to tip my pot over and sprinkle from about a foot off the water. So I'm going to make a little bit of noise. So then fish, hopefully, you just hear that sort of bit of noise on the water and they follow it down. Let me rig into that. I've got the wind in my face. So the way I want to lay it in, I want to flick it past my pole like that. And then I'll probably lift it about a foot out of the water. And when that rig straightens, I'm just going to lower it down. And the reason I do this is because if I did it the other way around, it's just not going to be right because the wind's sort of towing in, it's sort of towing into my face today. So if I don't put the rig from, if I don't flick the rig out and let it come in, it's going to be the wrong way around. So your, your, your hook bait's not going to be near your bait. And as you can see, I've just had a bite there, so I'm just going to peak the process. You know, I'm not going to be like lazy and just let it go straight down again because your rig, the presentation's not going to be right. So it's all about trying to keep your hook bait near where them loose offerings are going. So let your rig straighten like that and straight down. I've had a bite, you know, quite quickly just off them 10 pellets. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to give it about five minutes now. I'm just going to sit nice and patiently. And then if I don't get any indications, you know, I'll pick the catapult up and just sort of, see I'll get any indications there. What I was saying is I'll pick the catapult up, sort of ping two or three, and just trying to get a response and some fish interest in the actual feed. 
I've had two indications there straight away, which is quite good. So there is obviously some fish in the area, and now this is what I've got. To be, this is what I've got to think now is how am I going to get these fish on the bottom to where I want to catch them. But just be nice and patient. See, a lot of people will say they'd get a bit giddy and see that float going on. They'd stop firing bait everywhere, and in reality, you're just going to make it worse and make them harder to catch. I mean, the best way of catching, I always think, on pellets is little and often. So I just missed another bite. So the more bait you feed, the harder they are to catch. So it's all about feeding as little as you can to catch the fish. Now, from the response I've just got, I've obviously just missed three bites. I'm actually thinking to myself, them fish have probably heard that little bit of noise and they've probably just come off the bottom. I've gone a bit scatty. That's probably why I'm getting them indications. So I'm going to get a couple more minutes, be nice and patient. So if I don't get another bite, I'm going to come in. I'm not going to use a catapult because I'm getting indications. I think if I start catapulting them pellets in, it's going to send them even more loopy as such because they're going to be everywhere. They hear that noise, it's going to be everywhere. So the next time I feed, I'm just going to put again 10 pellets just to start with, another indication. I'm going to put 10 pellets in, but I'm going to make no noise. So I'm just going to sneak them in just about an inch above the water. I'm just going to turn my pot over and put some pellets in. Because obviously they've heard that noise and I've got a little reaction straight away. But I'm not catching the fish, so I need to change. So I'm just going to get another minute or two and then I'm going to actually make a change. There, another bite. So I'm going to ship in. I'm going to change this straight away. Now there is quite a lot of F1s in this lake and uh, any bit of noise they hear, they just want to come up and they get a bit excited as such. So now a lot of people, like I've been saying... They might carry on doing the same, they won't know how to fix it, so hopefully we're going to try and fix it now. So this time I'm actually going to put a few more pellets, I'm going to put like 15 pellets in. And you might think this is a bit gimmicky on the such, but I actually count them in. Now, you'd be surprised, sometimes you'll take a pinch of pellets and you don't really know how many's in there. So if I count 15, I know there's 15 in there, and believe me, I've had it days where I put 10 in and 10's right and you get a bit sort of you lose interest as such because you're catching fast you put like 15 16 in and you goes all funny your peg right so i've got my 15 pellets in the pot and like i said this time i'm just going to sneak them in so probably about an inch above the water i'm just going to get them pellets in and i've actually deliberately made not a lot of noise now because obviously the noise brings fish up so because i've had them indications it felt like the fish were coming up so i want to try and sort of pin them down on the bottom now and obviously it's important as well not to to try and rush it too quick because when them fish come into your peg at the start they can be a bit excited because obviously just started they hear the noise and they come straight like in and wondering what it is so you know just be patient for 10 or 15 minutes before you make too too many changes but like I said I felt that was a good step because obviously the 12 pellets, 10 pellets, 12 pellets, whatever, wasn't wasn't bringing them down. So I've just fed like 15, 16, and so I've had indication, but I've just caught a fish. But automatically, I'm thinking now, I could actually feed more pellets. So this probably this time I'll probably put like 18, 20 in, something like that. I mean, like I was saying as well, it is important to count because I don't know, it doesn't have to be exact, but difference between sort of 10 and 12 and 16 and 18 on the day it can it can make a difference quite surprising I'm guessing this is going to be an F1 yeah nice F1 nice fish and these are the fish that can cause you problems because they these sort of fish they love to come off the bottom now a lot of the time you can catch the shallow, but obviously today we want to try and catch them on the deck. But like I've been saying, there is ways we can get them to go down the bottom. And obviously we've just done that and it's worked straight away. But obviously I did miss a couple of bites before I hooked into that fish. So again, I'm just going to make a little change. I'm going to put like 18 or 20 pellets in now. So it's only, it doesn't sound many more, but just them little few more pellets can make that difference. So just again, put me six mil on the band. So 
here. So I've got about 20 pellets in that cup now. And again, I'm going to make no noise. So I'm just going to sneak them in about an inch above the water. Because I felt like that time, it, obviously I missed less bites. So it worked to an extent, but I've obviously still missed a couple of bites. So I still feel like I can tweak it a bit. Just take your time. Inch above the water. Just sneak them in like that. Just going to flick my rig out. It is important as well to lay your rig in correctly, I think. Because if you don't, I just... I don't think your presentation's right. I mean, it, you just want to basically put them pellets in and put your little your little pellet in that little pile of them. So if I get, put it this way, if um, your pellets were sort of a foot to the right or a foot to the left, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like you want everything to be nice and accurate. But again, we missed a bite then pretty early once we fed them pellets but I think what's happening is the initial reaction for the fish is the following them pellets down obviously because it's de deep you're going to get an indication on the way down we might have to feed less so we've just got to try and work this little bit out now we just had a liner then so obviously them fish are trying to come off bottom and then we've up one straight away so that was quicker then we just fed a few more don't get me wrong we've missed a couple of bites but they might settle down once we've been fishing for a bit but we caught a fish a lot quicker then, so that little change has worked. So we'll try that again after this fish. I mean, I think it's another F1. But honestly, I've had days where just putting like another five pellets in, it, it does make a massive difference. So it's just little things that can make big differences with this pellet fishing. Nice little F1. Lovely little fish. Right, so feeding them pellets by the cup has worked brilliantly. You know, we've just hold the pellets and we've caught really steady. Um, but now we're going to try another way of making noise and it's basically pinging with the catapult. So I'm just going to ship out there and show you what I'm doing. So this method on its day can be brilliant, but it can also be a nightmare because you can make too much noise and send the fish into a frenzy. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to flick my rig out, just past. And I'm going to lower, it, lower my bait in after that. So same again, exactly the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put like three or four pellets. I'm going to feed them twice. Now, like I say, you can feed it heavier and stuff like that, but sometimes you make too much racket and they're a nightmare, to be honest with you. So we just missed a bite there. Now, my prediction is this is going to cause a lot, a lot of missed bites, but we'll give it a go and see how we get on. So just put three or four, that weren't very good. Bear with me. So I'll pick like three or four pellets up. See, missed bites straight away. Then we'll do the same. And I always like to ping twice because I feel like the second lot, the fish just follow it down. And what I'll do is, I actually caught one. <laughs> But like I say, I think the fish as well, they're probably settled now because we put them like 18, 20 pellets in a pot and they've got them settled down. So we'll have a few, a few goes pinging pellets. But like I say, some days it's brilliant because it causes so much noise, but other days you just send the fish up and down and into a nightmare. So by having the two methods of cup and catapult, you can sort of alter it to suit what the fish want and you can get, you can get two different responses and see what the fish want really so that's another another nice f1 in the net so we'll try that again and another important thing with this especially big waters like this where you've got difficult lights is the float so the float we're using today it's actually got a two and a half mil tip which i think is really especially when you're fishing big pellets is really important the reason i like a thick bristle is first of all you can see it especially when you've got fishing long lengths and um got bad light which is so important because at the end of the day if you can't see your float there's no point fishing there um, and also when you're fishing decent sized baits it doesn't drag under so easy 
So I've had it in the past where you use like, say, a mil and a half bristle. When you're fishing bigger, heavier baits, it just doesn't work the same because it drags under. So and after using the Fury float last year, I think these two and two and a half mil bristles just work so nice. And I think this float is just absolutely perfect for the job, to be fair. And at the end of the day, you can see it. Like I say, it's no point fishing if you can't see your float. So again, I'm just gonna put, pick three or four pellets in, pellets up and just catapult them in the swim. Miss bite. But our prediction is today, this is just gonna send them, send them crackers as such, because they're, them F1s hear that noise and they just come at all different layers. And obviously, because this lake's deep, The fish, the fish can literally sit at any depth, so it makes them quite hard to fit, uh, hard to catch. But ideally, we want to catch a few carp today as well. So it's having the best of both worlds. And the carp prefer to be on the bottom this time of year normally. But we've had a few carp today, so hopefully we'll catch a few more. But what I will do is I'll like when I'm pinging pellets, I like to give it like a minute or two, and then put another three or four in. Right, so we showed you two different ways of feeding there. Obviously, the cut was absolutely brilliant, and I'd always recommend starting on a cut because you can control your swim nice, and you're never going to put too much bait in and send the fish in a frenzy. So today, that's actually been the best way, putting like 18, 20 pellets in, and you can control your peg dead nice. Because basically what it does, it sends a little pile of bait to the bottom, you put your hook bait in there, and it's all nice. But on the flip side of that, if you're not catching, you're not getting any bites or indications this is when your catapult really can be rewarding just by taking it nice and lightly little and often you can just draw some fish into your peg so to keep it simple if you're unsure start on a pot if you're catching great stick at it if you're not getting any bites pick your catapult up and try and get them fish to come in your peg and go, try and get a reaction and you can actually use again and say if they start going a bit giddy and you can't catch them, use your pot again, you can concentrate them in, into an area. So it's all about ringing the changes to catch the fish. As you can see, we've got another nice fish on here. It might be a carp actually. Little carp. There we go. So that's a nice way to finish the video off. Lovely, lovely carp that is. Looks like a new fish beauty so use them two different ways of feeding with pellets you can have some great sessions and catch plenty of fish so thanks for watching